The Gen 4 Formula E car is already upon us and they did say after testing they were going to show us sooner than later and we've had our first renders and a look at the evil looking straight out of a Batman film Gen 4 Formula E car and it looks fast as f Formula E have delivered on the promise of the Gen 4 content. This is earlier than I actually expected, but it's nice to have some renders, information, and a video to hype up the next season of Formula E. We're not even into season 12 yet, and we're getting glimpses of what the future of Formula E can look like. Now, I'm not doing this in the style of my unscripted videos, but I do have my pad with some information, mainly because it's really difficult, especially if you don't understand the world of EVs, to crunch the numbers and understand what it means. And I actually had a phone call with a friend who's almost like a car scientist about these. And he said, to be honest, I think they do it to deliberately confuse everyone, which is quite funny. So I will talk about some of the specs later and what we can expect on track, but let's just talk the easy stuff at the moment. Look at this. This car is just menacing. I know we had a Superman collab, but this is almost something out of Gotham. Like, especially in this dark livery and the, the picture style really makes this look like something out of a superhero film. One thing I have noticed is that rear wing at the back is definitely the best part of the car for me. Uh, it makes me question how they're going to get underneath that to do the pit boosts. The slot, the charge slot is there, so it's obviously going to be able to do it, but it might be a bit of a tight squeeze um, as the older wing they sort of went over the top of. But that wing is really menacing. The biggest change for Gen 4 is it's slightly longer than Gen 3. Obviously, it's had a bit of a facelift. It's obviously going to be faster, and it has been designed aerodynamically to be going to the corner faster, which is good because we'll then get high speed and medium speed corners coming onto the calendar as well. We do have them now, but we don't attack them at similar speeds to other racing series. So to have that extra downforce is definitely going to help with wheel to wheel action at high speeds in corners. It is longer, however, it is not wider because I was wondering what's going to happen when we come to tracks like London and Monaco. They're like the two tightest on our calendar. Now London sadly is no longer going to be with us for a while and even the CEO said in a press interview with Formula E Zone that it was going to be a challenge for London and they are rethinking of how that's going to work. In terms of Monaco, well they haven't made the cars wider so we're still going to get three to two wide car overtakes on Monaco which is always exciting because I absolutely look forward to that race to be able to see the cars. In terms of Monaco, uh, simulations are saying that the car could, with its new power outputage could be doing a 120 to 122 which puts it in the pace of the Formula 2 car which is very exciting. It shows the advancements. Obviously Formula E I think is around a 131 to 135 around Monaco so it's definitely a brilliant gauge of how far the technology is coming. And I've got the numbers crunched. Uh, again, I still had to do a phone call to try and work these out because the way they sort of talk about kilowatts and kilowatts per hour, they sound very similar and like the numbers are just a bit annoying and you do have to have a bit of a sciencey background. But after speaking to my good friend Elliot, so thank you Elliot, he explained basically this. Kilowatts, which is KW, is the peak output this car is going to be able to do. So essentially that's like brake horsepower in like petrol terms, but it's obviously it's electrical equivalent. So 450 is the standard all wheel drive mode in the Formula E Gen 4 car. Now this is the first Formula E and I think racing series to do all wheel drive as like the permanent mode. Because last season we had all wheel drive, but only in attack mode. So we had real wheel drive cars, but when we went into attack mode, the front wheels then were motors as well. And that was what kind of made the overtaking fantastic. I'm not worried too much because I've seen what happens when they go into attack mode. So we should still have crazy overtakes. But yes, KW is what the, the motors and battery can peak operate at. Now in attack mode it goes all the way up to 600 which means you have 150 extra power hence why I'm not too worried it just means there's going to be so much more power delivery and it should be a lot faster down the straights and even in the corners. So that's KW you've got KWH which is kilowatts I think it's like kilowatts per hour kind of essentially and that's how you measure batteries 
Uh, do call me out in the comments because it, it, I, this is quite complex for me. But if we have a 50 to 60 battery, which is I think what Formula E are using, that's kind of like your mid-range car. So it's quite crazy with the technology. And my friend Elliot said they're probably using smaller batteries because of weight. And if you think about how Pascal Wehrlein flipped it in Sao Paulo last season, the cars are pretty light because I know that the modern day electric cars are quite hard to tip. So I think the battery is not essentially at the bottom, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff we don't know about these cars and it'll be interesting to get a deep dive with Formula E about where things position. It'd be great to see something like that because it would help us understand the cars more because the series is great. The drivers are fantastic, but the cars are a bit like UFOs really. Um, but yeah, they're the kind of things you need to understand though is the KW and the KWH because once you understand that, you can kind of understand the jargon they're talking about in these technical stuff. But it's definitely the 450 into 600, which is crazy. And then the 600 cable that they plug into the back just means that they can charge it up at that speed. So there's so many KWs in this series, it's a bit mind boggling. So I hope that helps, that's what I'm trying to do. So yeah, the car is estimated to be around 845 brake horsepower. Uh, which is quite comparable to older F1 cars, but I don't want to do the comparison with Formula One, but it kind of gives you a gauge of where this series is growing into as they want to get the cars faster and build something just as successful as them. And that's why they're talking about Gen 3 cars becoming the new F2 or the Formula E2 um, for Formula E, which is absolutely fantastic because we know those cars are great. They're fantastic in their attack mode. So the more this series builds, obviously the more chance of drivers we're going to get into it so yeah kind of talking more about the future but the gen 4 car is definitely looking good in terms of it there's 43 percent more energy being used in the races due to the way the braking the power is being distributed and up to 700 kilowatts of regenerative energy again back in science mode i really wish i had a pair of glasses and a lab coat here because i do feel like i'm talking well over my intellect but to put that into perspective essentially if we use three percent over a lap at just a random track you could potentially recuperate 0.3 to one percent of energy back and that's kind of what they're talking about how this regen fills those batteries back up because obviously they deplete the energy but in electric cars they don't just dissipate the energy it then goes back into the battery and that's sort of how they keep their charge all EVs kind of do this uh, but in Formula E these numbers are incredibly high so yeah it's going to be really exciting the Gen 4 car looks awesome from the renders and yeah, thank you so much for Marie for sharing that so early. And hopefully this might be the first video on YouTube that talks about Formula E Gen 4 car. So yeah, thanks for stopping by. I do want to say if you can help by subscribing to the channel, uh, we're doing extremely really well in terms of growth before the pre-season. And some of the commenters have said, let's get to a thousand as a challenge by the end of the season. So if I didn't do my plug, I wouldn't be doing you guys, a, uh, I wouldn't be doing you guys proud. So, uh, but thank you so much for tuning in. This is The Current Lap and we talk about everything Formula E and we are looking forward to season 12, which of course is in around 28 days in Sao Paulo for Lights Out. So yes, if you're new around here, this is The Current Lap.